Spring is in full force right now. With more sunlight and higher temperatures, the plants are growing again and turn nature into a symphony of green and all kinds of other colors. But not only plants come to life, there are also countless types of insects roaming and buzzing around again. Some are super important, some are super annoying and some deserve the description creepy crawly. But although they sometimes appear to be very different and distinct, generally, with a few exceptions, all insects have the same basic anatomy. This is due to the fact that they are all related and share a common ancestor at the base of their family tree. To get a better understanding of all bugs and beetles around you, we will try to bring you the basic anatomy of insects in an easy explanation. In the adult stage of life, all insects have three distinct body parts, which are actually somewhat similar to the human body parts. There is a head, a thorax and an abdomen, but let's first take a closer look at the head. The head obviously contains a pair of compound eyes and also a mouth part and a pair of antenna. Especially the mouth part comes in many different sizes and appearances, which are mainly adapted to the diet of the insect. If the animal feeds on solid foods, the mouth part is usually a combination of biting and chewing pieces like the ones from grasshoppers or beetles. Other insects like the mosquito or flea have a proboscis which is used for piercing and sucking. Similar to the proboscis of a mosquito are the ones of butterflies and moths. However, those are usually long and tube-like and can be uncoiled to siphon nectar out of flower nectaries instead of piercing skin or plants. Therefore, this mouth part is referred to as a siphoning mouth part. Insects like flies, on the other hand, have a sponge-like mouth part. This is used to pump saliva onto the food source to dissolve it and to suck it up again. Now let's move over to the thorax, which mainly has the task to hold appendages used for movement. The thorax can be divided into three subparts called the prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. Each of those three subparts hold one pair of legs, which are then called fore, mid and hind legs. Just like the mouth part, the legs can be heavily modified depending on the need of the insect. They are obviously there for locomotion like running and jumping, but also for things like digging, holding prey or grabbing onto a mating partner. Insect legs might look very different, but thankfully all of them follow the same basic principle and are divided into five main parts. The coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia and tarsus. Also attached to the thorax are the wings, which usually come in two pairs. A big exception to that is the common housefly, which has only one pair of wings. However, they do have something called halters, which is an evolution of the second wing pair. The halters are flapped at a high speed and are therefore maintaining balance in the air while doing complicated flight movements such as tight spirals or zigzags. But like I said before, most other insects have two pair of wings. One pair of wings is essentially made up of a thin membrane, which is supported by veins around the edges and within the membrane. In some insects like bees, the second pair of wings is also made up out of this thin membrane. But there are other insects like beetles which have a harder outer wing called elytra. The elytra covers and protects the underlying membranous wing and is not necessarily used for flight. Now like we mentioned at the beginning, the last body part of an insect is the abdomen, which mainly contains organs like the heart, a huge part of the digestive system and parts of the reproduction organs. It may also contain external structures like a stinger. A good example for that are wasps and bees. In worker bees, its main purpose is self-defense. However, in queen bees, the stinger is also used for laying eggs, so it plays a vital role in reproduction and survival of the species. I really hope this video helped you to get a better understanding of every part of an insect and what it is responsible for. Keep in mind that we mainly covered basic information and that there is a lot more detail to discover. If you are interested, check out the sources in the description box below. We also created a similar video for the anatomy of a tree. Click on the info symbol that will pop up in the top right hand corner or look on my channel for the video. Lastly, I would like to ask you to leave a like if you enjoyed the content and maybe even to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. But enough with the talking. Take care of yourselves and have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.